Hey, in today's episode, I answer questions from our tour group of students about how long does it take to start seeing improvements when adopting lean practices. I also show them how lean is really a mindset of continual improvement and our four stage process for filtering new improvement ideas. Now, it can be overwhelming beginning the journey of improving your shop, but it doesn't need to be. So in this video, we aim to provide you with some realistic tools to help you continue innovating your production. How long did it take you to finally settle into this process? Because you said originally it didn't start off this way. Yeah. So again, the culture of continual improvement triggered by the phrase, fix what bugs you. And so we always stop to make improvements. In the typical job shop or high stress, toxic work uh, environment, they're like, just get it done. Yeah, but what if you get it done? What if you could just stop and improve it? Um, I think it's an Abraham Lincoln quote. It's someone smart that said it. Um, if you had like four hours to, or, or an hour to chop down a tree, what would you do? Well, I would spend the first 30 minutes sharpening my ax. That's what we wanna do. We wanna sharpen, we call it sharpening the blade around here. Um, if this is a process that's gonna live on in perpetuity because it's a mature product line, stop and make the, the improvement. Burn, I don't care if you burn a day, improving it because we know that within a month, a couple months, sometimes even a week, sometimes by the end of the day, we see that improvement back. If we can buy a $20 Allen wrench set so that a guy doesn't walk around for 10 minutes every morning, we'll make it up by the end of the work week. So yeah, continual improvement, so. Lean manufacturing, can it be implemented at any level of a company? Small shops, big shops, any size shops? Yeah, so I always say that lean manufacturing is not like it's not like a set of tools, it's a mindset. So like these guys, whenever we go have morning meetings, we cover the eight ways, we cover our 10 company principles, cover our nine company values, we recite our vision statement, we talk about our mission statement, all that stuff, because we want to put that in people's minds so that they're wearing like a set of glasses that see the world through a lens of eliminating waste. So. Yeah, like if you're prototyping, prototyping is one of the most difficult environments to deploy lean in because there's so many moving pieces. You're always changing stuff, you're throwing stuff away. But you could have your set of tools that travels with you. You know, um, one of the things that you guys have done investing in our pallet systems, hey, we're going to make this hub or I don't know, what do you guys do? Yeah, the previous year they, they standardized with this pallet. We're going to make it, nothing's going to change. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, no pun intended, but that type of thing. Uh, we just standardize that type of type of work. So, okay. yeah, Thank you. mindset. Um, throughout the tour, yeah. you were talking about how um, you try to avoid people walking over to each other. Yeah. So how does communication work throughout the workshop? Yeah. And okay. How do you keep track of it? That's really good. Okay. So our main form of, from my perspective, like big picture communication happens in our morning meetings. We do that at 9 a.m. And then we just go over all that stuff that I just mentioned. Those are the principles, and that's like the why. Then we have the, the how, that's where we train, like the eight ways, that type of thing. I'll show you next, like our, what we call the Pearson boards, that show us how, like what needs to get done. Um, the best communication is no communication, believe it or not. Like, if you're gonna communicate between two people, that's what I call face-to-face, -face. that's very inefficient because it relies on the person asking the person with the knowledge, the right question, the, the professor giving the right answer and the whole answer, the listener hearing it, understanding it and retaining it correctly and then going and doing it. So that's why I said we push everything towards video because if the person that has a question can go watch a video, it doesn't require the professor, the trainer to communicate everything accurately or completely. It takes the pressure of this person um, uh, having to retain everything. Um, it's like, it, like a day one person asking me, the CEO, how to do something, I explain it, I'm busy and then I run off. It's very nerve wracking for him to say, excuse me, sir, can you explain it to me one more time? In a toxic work culture, 
they would be like, dude, I already told you, how could you do that? Who is this guy? Who hired this fool? You know, that's terrible. Then he's going to fumble through it. He or she is going to have these questions going, oh, do I, do I uh, hopefully like try and remember and risk making a, a mistake or do I go back and angering my manager, my boss, the owner, that type of thing. It's a horrible position to be in. But if they said, hey, here's the process, here's the training manual, here's the QR code, watch it, watch it over and over, save it to your personal playlist, you can do all that. So again, eliminating that even need to communicate is number one. So let me just start this way. Again, fix what bugs you. If it takes under two minutes to make an improvement, you stop what you're doing, you just go do it. If you're busy and it takes more than two minutes, you can delay it. Hey, at the end of the day, when this job is finished, we'll do it. Um, if you think you need some help or you're too busy or there's someone better, you delegate it or you just sit on it and go, you know, uh, there's a famous Steve Jobs quote that says, it's easy to say no to bad ideas, but it's best to say no to good ideas. So there's lots of good ideas, but just because it's a good idea doesn't mean we should run with it, okay? So I've given you four things there. You, an idea pops in your head, under two minutes, you do it. Um, if you don't have the time, you delay it. If you're not the right person, you delegate it. If you're not sure of it, you, you just, you delete it. And so I'll come in the next morning and I'll, I'll capture my ideas and go, that's not that great. Like, what was I thinking? Like, I thought I was a genius at 9 a.m. yesterday, but it's 10 a.m. today and that was stupid. So just don't do it. You know, so you have the four Ds. If something does go to the delegate side, we just put these ideas out here and we do a quick like, hey, uh, Alex, I'm going to need your help. Let's just like throw some stuff on here and then we'll, we'll both think about it. Then when we decide, yeah, it's a good idea. We put, we delayed it for a few days. Then we'll put it on like the lean execution board where we have kind of like the, the idea, whose idea was it, the visionary, who was, who's actually going to get it done, the integrator. And then if it needs support, like here's one pallet fixture storage. Alex is like, I really need a place to store pallets, but dude, I'm busy. I don't have time to set up shelves. Okay, Wyatt, can you do it? You met Wyatt at the beginning. Yeah, I can do it. He goes to Costco, he buys the shelves, he builds them. And then supporter, hey Kyle, um, Wyatt's done building shelves. You, Kyle, you work on the shop floor. I don't know where these pallets go. I need your support. You put them in order. So it's a team effort. His idea, he got it done, he finalized it. And then is there anything needed? Like, yeah, there was a design we needed to do to, to put these brackets in place so the pallets don't fall, fall over. As a fusion design. When something gets stalled out, then it goes to our 95% board. You do not want ideas ending up here. That's where we've invested the brain power. We've collaborated. We have a plan. We put, on, put it in place, but we got stuck somewhere. We put 90 to 95% of the effort into it. It goes here so we can just get it done. Like, when you get to 100%, that's when you start reaping the rewards of your brain power, your labor, your ideas, all that stuff. So when things get stalled, we're human, we get distracted, it goes there and we'll review these. Like, oh man, we just gotta get it done. We've done so much work. And then we have kind of like a status bar. So that's kind of how. So again, uh, communication, whose idea? Uh, your question. Uh, communication's good, but if we can eliminate communication, even better if we can standardize communication through some of these systems and processes. Awesome. So if you're interested in learning more about our journey from a small shop to a lean factory, make sure and like and subscribe for more tips and tricks. Now, until next time, go innovate your production.